Okay, so it seems like everyone's had an opportunity to answer in the polls, and you can see your classmates have sort of shaded toward answer choice D with 50% of the votes, and answer choices C and E are receiving a little bit of love, but let's go over this question. And hopefully as you were reading through this question, you noticed a few things. And the first thing you should have noticed is that the entire sentence is in fact underlined. And that's kind of rare on the SAT. You don't see that too often. Usually part of the sentence is underlined and part of it is not underlined. But in this case, the entire thing is underlined, which means anything is sort of fair game if we want to think about it like that. We can pretty much change any element of the sentence if we want to. Now, when I look at a sentence like this, there are a few things that jump out at me. And the first thing that jumps out, these words not only. Does anyone, what, what, is, what are the words not only? What do they tell me? You know, how can they help me figure out what's going on in this sentence? Just by seeing those two words right in a row. Is there anything I know about these words? Javier says it's a comparison, and that's very close, because with comparisons you're dealing with two different items. Aha, John is saying there has to be a but also, and that's exactly right, because if you guys remember from earlier in the lesson, we call these guys connector buddies. And we like to think of them as buddies because they always go together. And when we're dealing with not only and but also, we just have to look at the first word after not only, which is received, and we have to look at the first word after but also, which is it. Now, that's kind of a problem because they're not the same category of word, right? Received is a verb, it's an action, and it is actually a pronoun, right? It's a person, place, or thing, and it's a it's sticking in for another noun, that's why it's called a pronoun. So when we see these connector buddies, that should be your first reaction, is look at the first word after not only, and then look at the first word after but also. And if they don't match up, like in this case, in answer choice A, we have a verb after the first part, and we have a pronoun after the second part, that's going to be a wrong answer. So I'm so glad that none of you chose answer choice A. Good work. Give yourselves a little uh, mini virtual pat on the back over there. <laughs> Nathan, yeah, that's Nathan's question here is so it has to match, and that's exactly right. That's why we call them connector buddies. They're sort of connected to each other. So we could have two verbs, or both of them could be pronouns, or both of them could be prepositions, whatever we'd want, whatever the sentence calls for, as long as they do in fact match. Okay? So now let's take a look at answer choice B. Built in 2003. Now, if you guys remember even earlier in our lesson, we talked about when a modifier or a describer starts off a sentence, right? Built in 2003. Now, ask yourself, according to the logic of the sentence, what was built in 2003, right? Of all the different nouns in this sentence, we've got game, we've got Dr. Pepper ballpark, we've got acclaim. What was built in 2003? Exactly. Nate says the ballpark, and that's exactly right. Now, when you know for a fact that something was built in 2003, then that has to be the first noun after that comma. All right, the comma comes right after 2003. The first noun after the comma should be ballpark. So, you know, because we know this rule, we can actually get rid of two answers right in a row. We can get rid of both B and C, and I love doing this. I love eliminating a couple answers at the same time, because when I do that, I'm saving so much time, right? Built in 2003, the all-star game. Now, the all-star game wasn't built in 2003. That doesn't make any sense. And the same thing is true in answer choice C. Built in 2003, not only, right? Not only is not the ballpark. So in fact, ballpark is right next to the noun, but we want the word ballpark to be right there. We want that noun phrase to be right next to the comma. And that's not what's going on in answer choice C. So we get rid of two more answers, all right? Good, good, good. Now let's take a look at answer choice D. You guys notice that there's a couple more connector buddies. What's going on with my connector buddies in answer choice D? And I see this was the popular answer, so we should really spend some time here. What do you guys think? Aha, John is saying they both have verbs, and that's why this is such a popular answer. Not only received, okay, so the first connector buddy has a verb, but also hosted. Aha, so we got, we got two verbs, that's looking pretty good. So in terms of the connector buddies, that's pretty good, all right? Is there anything else, though, about answer choice D? Because I noticed that not everyone chose D. Is there something about answer choice D that's uh, maybe just a little bit funky, a little bit off? Aha, Nathan has said the end. Now remember what I said, built in 2003. The thing that's built in 2003 is that ballpark. And we want that ballpark to be right next to the modifier built in 2003. Now even though in answer choice D, the modifier comes after the noun, it still should be right next to the thing it's modifying. And in answer choice D, it's modifying all-star game. And that's incorrect. We want the ballpark to be, modifying, uh, to be modified by built in 2003. Okay? 
So that's, that's always what you want to be thinking about when you see one of these modifiers. Whether it's at the beginning of the sentence, like in answer choice C, or if it's at the end of the sentence in answer choice D, the ballpark should be right next to it. Okay? Or if you want to use a little math term, they should be adjacent. All right? <laughs> that you can uh, probably use in your vocab on sentence completion. Adjacent means right next to. Okay, now let's take a look at what's the correct answer process of elimination. It must be answer choice E. And in this case, we've got ourselves a perfectly fine modifier built in 2003 right next to ballpark. So that works for me. That's pretty good. And then also we've got not only our first connector buddy followed by a verb and but also followed by a verb. So answer choice E sort of, you know, combines all the different good things of all the other answer choices, right? It combines the great connector buddy, it combines uh, the correct order of the subject and the verb, it combines putting the modifier right next to the correct noun, it's got all the ingredients of a good answer and therefore answer choice E is correct. Okay, before I move on, are there any other questions about this one? You guys seem to be with me, you know, as I'm asking these questions, you, you really, uh, you've got some, you got some great, great ideas, great feedback. All right, now Emily's asking, should we start with E? That's a, that's a tough question. I mean, there's sometimes in, in, in the SAT math questions, you do want to start with E, but in verbal, I'm going to encourage you to start with A. Now, first of all, all the answer choices have an equal likelihood of being chosen, right? A, B, C, D, and E, they all have a one in five chance or a 20% chance of being the correct answer. So it's not like you're getting a statistical advantage by starting at E, even if you, you might think you are. And additionally, the, the, uh, the sentence as written is answer choice A, right? Answer choice A is the exact same as this sentence up top. And so when we're analyzing the sentence that the SAT gives us, it's, it's in our best interest to analyze answer choice A first and then be very systematic, then B, then C, then D, then E. Yes, Nate, always. Uh, every single SAT grammar question like this, this is called the improving sentences section. Any sentence in this section, answer choice A is going to be the exact underlined portion from the original sentence. Okay? So yeah, we're breaking down not just the answer choices, but also what's going on in the test. So these are all great questions. Thanks so much, guys. Okay? Good work. Another question from Darren. What are some other connector buddies? Can anyone name any? We got not only and but also. That's a biggie. But what are, what are some other ones that we see on the SAT pretty often? Anyone know any of these? This is sort of a, a bonus question for you guys. Does anyone know any other connector buddies? Things that when they're on the SAT, if you see one of them, you know there has to be the other. What are people thinking here? Neither nor, absolutely, Emily, good call. And if we know that neither nor is our connector buddy, then it's a pretty safe bet that either or is also going to be a connector buddy, okay? So whenever we see the word neither, we want to be looking out for the word nor. And if we see the word either, we want to be looking out for the word or. And this is, this is really good information to know because they sort of go in tandem or they go, you know, they go together. That's why we call them buddies. <laughs> Easy as that. Okay, so now we got another question here. And I'm going to let you guys work on this one. I'm going to pause the camera, and you guys can try to answer in the polls. Okay, good luck, everybody.